Hello and welcome to Functional Foundations. Today's class is going to be a full body class and we're really focused on stabilizing the hips specifically. So helping out people who are maybe dealing with some knee pain either from running when they're not used to running or just from sitting at their desk a little bit too much. So quite a bit of emphasis on the hips and then also quite a bit of emphasis on shoulder health. So hopefully you will enjoy that. There is no cardio component to today. We're going to do a rep-based class, so 10 reps for each exercise, no timer. Um, if you would like a cardio-based class, then just go on to the YouTube channel and there are lots of other classes on there which have more cardio in them. So what you'll need for equipment today are a couple of heavier dumbbells. We're going to be doing chest press with these. So I'm using my milk jugs as per usual. We also need a heavy dumbbell for rows. I will use my backpack. You can use whatever works for you. And lastly, we're going to be doing some very light work on the backs of the shoulders. So I'll be using some large soup cans. Um, you can use a weight somewhere in the three to five pound range. So once you have your equipment all set up, we can start with our warm up, starting with the shoulders, just big backward shoulder rolls all the way up to your ears, all the way down your back. And forward shoulder rolls. And we'll get a little bit more into that upper back. So hands by your head, you're going to squeeze those elbows back in together and fold them forward. I'm gonna go for about five of these. One more. Awesome. Moving into some hips, knees, and ankles. We're doing some squats, sitting your hips down and back, keeping those feet flat on the floor, thinking about pulling the floor apart between those feet. Knees track in exactly the same direction as your feet are facing. As you get warmer, you can try to get a little deeper in that squat if it works for you and there's no pain. And we're going to add in some rotations here. So just twisting to the outside of that knee, turning those shoulders, coming up the other way, you can release that foot and that hip as you rotate over the opposite shoulder. Two more this way. Excellent. And now we're going to just rotate on the other side. Getting you ready for golf season, if they open the courses, hopefully. Maybe even some tennis. One more. Excellent. So moving into the frontal plane, that's your side to side motion. Step nice and wide. You're just going to rock one way, rock the other, sitting your hips down and back. As you get warmer, maybe you can get a bit lower into that side lunge. <laughs> Just listen to your body. And we're going to add in a reach. So reaching over this way and the other way. Let's go for two more each direction. Awesome job. Okay, you should be feeling somewhat warmed up. We're going to do three rounds of each circuit today. I will introduce our first exercise, which are single leg squats against the wall. I introduced these in the Learn to Trail Run video, if you watch that. So what you need to do is stand tall, stand just a little ways away from the wall, 
press your knee firmly against that wall while staying nice and tall. And it's this leg that you're standing on that's doing the work. You should feel your hips engage. You're gonna sit down and back. Watch that this knee stays lined up over that toe and then come back up. You're going for 10 of these on each side. The depth you go to depends on your flexibility and strength. You just need to watch this knee, make sure it stays lined up over your foot. It's not collapsing inward. That will be your limiting factor for how deep you get. Going for 10 on each side. You should feel your hips working hard. Push with this leg into the wall. Excellent. When you reach your 10, just going to turn around. Same thing on the other leg. Paying attention to that knee. Pushing into the wall. Really good. You should feel your butt working hard. Next exercises are a step back lunge with your arm overhead. So arm outstretched overhead. All you're going to do is step back into a lunge with the same leg as the arm that's overhead. You're just going to step back and then using this leg to create all the force, you're going to stand right back up. Keep this arm straight overhead and try to use that front leg to do all the work. You're going for 10 again on each side. That front foot stays flat on the floor. Again, paying attention to that knee. It should stay directly over your toes. One more here. All right, and switching sides, holding. I always do this, watch gets in the way. Holding that dumbbell or weight overhead, working the shoulder nice and hard. Reverse lunge, keep that arm straight, stand it up. Watching this knee, keeping that nice alignment. Two more of my pace. Excellent. From there, we have a dead bug with a leg lower. Just gonna adjust this to show the floor a bit better. Okay, so you're going to lie on your back. And for the dead bug, the key here is having your hips and knees bent at 90 degrees and crunching up so that you push your lower back into the ground. You're gonna hold this position, tap one foot down, Tap the other foot down. Going for 10 taps. If you want it harder, you can extend those legs out. Keep your lower back really pressed into the floor. Whew. Take breaks as you need it. Press that lower back down. Shoulders should be off the floor if you can. Nice and controlled. Reset form as you need it. Really nice. Okay, so that's our first circuit. We're going to do it two more times. Take breaks as you need them. Just hit pause, whatever you need to do. 
Starting out with these single leg squats, pressing against the wall so you can get those glutes firing properly. So make sure you're close enough that you're, you're not having to really reach with this leg, all right? You wanna be close enough to the wall that your arm's not getting in the way and you're just pressing that knee into the wall nice and firmly, sitting back and back up. Notice those glutes engaging. Pay lots of attention to that knee. Going for 10. Yes, really good. Okay, other way. Same thing, just far enough that nothing is getting in the way. Stand tall, press with this knee nice and firmly. Sit down and back. Pay attention to that knee. Excellent. Okay. From there we have your reverse lunge with the overhead arm reach. Grabbing whatever dumbbell works for you. It's the same arm up as the leg that's going back so that we get a good stretch through the hip flexors. Stepping back, reach tall and right back up. Go for 10. Front leg is doing the work. Back one is just there for balance. Last one here. Good. Shake that out. We have the other side. Reach tall. Front leg doing the work. You're stretching out this, whoop, stretching out this whole side. Trying to keep your arms straight. Working those shoulder stabilizers. Last one here. Awesome job. All right, back to that dead bug. Pressing that lower back down into the floor, getting a good strong crunch. Shoulders come off the floor. Let's see if you can see me here. All right, lower back, press down. If you bring your elbows out, it's more challenging. If your arms are in front of you, it's a bit easier. Going for 10 each leg, so 20 total. Again, if you extend your legs, it's also more difficult. But it should be challenging just to hold that crunch and press your lower back down into that floor. You got it. Awesome job. Okay, one more round. Killing it. Back to the single leg squats on the wall. Staying tall. 
Pressing that knee against the wall, sitting down and back. Feel that glute engage. Going only as low as works for you. Two more. Excellent. Pay attention to that knee. Don't get lazy. Yes, very nice. Grab your heavier weight. Reach up overhead. You are stepping back, staying tall, standing up, using that front leg to do all the work. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so same arm up as the leg that goes back. So you get this good stretch through here. Stay tall. Good stuff. Switching sides when you're ready. Ten more. Reach up. Last one. Good. All right, dead bug. Super abs. All right, find 90, 90. Crunch, press those hips down. Going for 10 taps per side, 20 total, just as you need to. Press that lower back into the floor. Excellent work. Grab a quick drink if you like. We're into our next circuit. Okay, so next circuit is uh, quite challenging if you're like me and you're not very flexible, especially if you have hamstring limitations, but that's why we do these things to try and work on releasing some of those muscles. So the first thing we're gonna do, they're called scales, and you may get some cramping in your hip flexor, which is totally fine. Just embrace that cramp. That means you are working that muscle in a new range of motion. So what you're gonna do is stand on one foot, and you're gonna keep both knees locked, 
lift this leg up as high as you can. For me, that's as high as I can. And then you're going to hinge forward. Try to come into a nice T position. Keep your hips square. Feel a good stretch through that hamstring. So that's one. So this is called a front scale. And this is your back scale. So we're going for 10 of these on each leg. Come up, feel your hip flexor working hard. And coming forward, maybe feel a bit of a hamstring stretch. Your glute is working hard to stabilize you. And then your, how high you're able to raise your foot in front is going to be limited a lot by hamstring flexibility, but also on the health of that hip flexor, how much is able to lift that heavy leg up. Trying to keep your legs straight the whole time. Is this eight? <laughs> I'm not good at counting. Nine. Big squeeze, stay tall. All right, so move at 10, whatever pace that works for you. Slow and controlled is more effective. And then we're gonna switch sides, so Straight leg, lift as high as you can, stay tall, hinge, reach out, one. Two. <laughs> Try not to fall over. I developed some significant blisters on my feet this weekend. And although they're healing, they're definitely throwing off my balance, as will happen anytime you have sore spots anywhere in your legs or your feet. That is why I'm wearing shoes today. Last one here. Really good. Okay, from there you're going to grab, I'm gonna use my office chair. You can grab any sort of raised surface because you're gonna be in a plank doing a row. So maybe that will be a good angle for you. So, Grabbing your heavy weight. You're in your plank position, keeping your hips nice and level. And the reason why we're on this raised surface is so you can fully straighten that arm out. You're gonna row up and back down. Going for 10. Don't let anything else shift. Don't let your hips shift. Just driving that elbow up to the ceiling, keeping that core nice and tight. Control it. Awesome. And then you'll switch sides. Going for 10 more. <laughs> My bag is opening up. On the other side, keeping that core nice and strong, driving up and back down. Breathe. Awesome. Okay, last one in this is a chest press press with a glute lift. So just alter the screen a bit here so you can see the floor a bit better. Grabbing two dumbbells. 
fairly heavy. So this is going to simulate being uh, doing a decline press because you're going to lie here and then you're going to lift those hips up. So now I'm inverted. So squeeze your glutes, your knees, hips, and shoulders should all be in a nice straight line. You're going to press up and together, then back down until your elbows touch the ground, keeping the weights right over top of your chest, going for 10. So make sure you have heavy enough weights. I confess these milk jugs are actually not heavy enough. So if you have something heavier, that would be a good idea. And one more rep. Awesome. And if you don't have heavier weights, but you want to make it tougher, you can turn it into a fly. So coming out wider with your hands and then that will make it more challenging. So let's do two more rounds. Starting out with those front and back scales. Working on lots of hip stability here, as well as your hip flexor and hamstring endurance. So standing on your one foot, bringing the opposite up, trying to keep your knees straight, reaching out, keeping your hips square to the ground. Big squeeze at the front and big squeeze at the back. Last one. Excellent. Let's switch sides. Front scale. I'm always amazed at how gymnasts and circus performers can just lift their leg right up. Or even yogis can lift their leg right up in front of them. I would love to get to 90 degrees. That would be amazing. I think I might have to stop running in order to do that. That's halfway. Big squeeze, work that hip flexor. Give me one more. Awesome. Moving into your core and your upper back, we have the bent over rows with as heavy of weight as you can handle, keeping those hips level. Ready, here we go. Hand per side. Excellent. And switch it up. Other arm. Here we go. Nice. 
All right, moving into those chest presses with the glute bridge. Grab your dumbbells. Squeeze your glutes to lift up. Get your body in that nice straight line. Keep those glutes squeezed. Pressing up and back down. Going for 10, choosing heavy enough weights that this is challenging. And like I said before, if you want, you can come into more of a fly, which will make it more challenging if you don't have heavy enough weights for the chest press. Keep those hips up, don't get lazy. Awesome job. We have one round to go. So into those front and back scales for the final time. Keep the focus on staying tall with your stance leg, you're pressing down into the floor and with the other leg, you're lifting up in front as high as you can and vice versa in the back. All right, here we go. Lift, pressing down with this leg and reaching behind you, make yourself nice and long, nice T. Two. Three. Four, nice and controlled. Six. Eight, two more. Big reach. Awesome job. Okay. Switching sides. Let's see if this side can be as good as the last one. Here we go. Lift and reach. your hips score to the floor. Six. Seven. Nine. Good. Whew. Okay, we have our bent over rows. Final time. Get your raised surface. Get your heavy weight. Here we go. Nice flat back, hips stay level, driving that elbow to the ceiling. Excellent. All right, switch it up the other side. Keep that core nice and tight. 
Don't let it shift. Awesome, really good. Okay, into your chest press with the glute lift. Final round of these. You can also do chest flies. And then we're into our last core circuit. All right, so hips up, squeeze your glutes. Keep the weights in line with your chest. If you envision they were gonna fall down, they should fall onto your chest, not your face. But don't drop them. Six. Nice and controlled. Excellent job. Okay, into our last circuit which is on the floor. Grab a quick drink if you'd like. Just gonna top the screen a little bit here to show as much floor as possible. There we go. Okay, so Starting off with a side bridge, but we're adding in a hip dip. So you only have to do 10 on your elbow. Body is in a nice straight line. And you're gonna dip your hips down and then press them right up. And the key here is that you're going straight vertical up and down. You're not twisting at all. You're going for 10 hip dips on each side. If you're feeling ambitious, you can place a weight on your hip, which will make it more challenging. If you're feeling less ambitious, you can also bend that bottom knee, keep your body in that nice straight line, drop down and back up. So whatever version you choose, go for 10. You can start at one version and switch if you need to. Ready? Here we go. All the way down, all the way up, trying to get a full range without twisting. You should not feel this in your back. You should feel it in that bottom oblique working hard. When you reach 10, you're just gonna switch sides. Making sure again, your body's in a straight line, your hips aren't sitting back. Straight down, straight up. Your knees should be straight the whole time. If you notice you're bending and straightening one, you're probably twisting your hips. Excellent. From there we have a Superman press. So this is where you're gonna grab lighter weights in the three to five pound range or use soup cans. It really depends on your shoulder health. So if you have really healthy, strong shoulders, you might be able to do more weight. And for some of you, you might just do body weight on these. So you are lying on your belly here. You're gonna lift up into your Superman position. So lift your chest, lift your legs, hold it there with those soup cans. You're reaching up overhead and then back down. Keep your face staring down at the floor. Don't let those soup cans touch the floor. Keep them hovering above. Try to get full extension as much as you can. Going for 10. When you reach overhead, it should be very hard. Breathe. Excellent. All right, catch your breath. The last one in the circuit is a T-spine rotation. This is not a strength exercise. This is a mobility exercise. So you're going to be on your hands and knees. Your two knees and your one arm stay still. 
so you don't move, you're not shifting your hips back and forth, and you're not bending your elbow. With the other one, you're going to bring that arm all the way across to the opposite arm, and then reach up to the ceiling as much as you can. You can see I'm restricted there. Down, and then back up. Get as much rotation as you can while keeping the rest of your body still. You're going for 10. Excellent. Let's switch sides. So this arm stays still. There's no bending of the elbow. Legs stay still. Hips stay still. Hands by your head. Here we go. Rotate under. Rotate up. Just whatever you can handle. Can we get a good squeeze in each direction. One more at my pace. Excellent. All right, we're going to do that circuit one more time and then you're all done. So let's start with the side bridge with the hip dips. You can go on your knees, on your feet. You can add a weight. Your option. Nice straight line, straight up and down. Here we go. Awesome. Should be hard, so make sure you pick a version where you're starting to struggle around eight, but you can maintain that good form. Straight line, straight up and down, no twist. Exhale on exertion. Awesome. Super runs. Reaching out, trying to get full extension with those hands. Lift everything up. Here we go. Keep that neutral neck, stare down at the floor. Working the back side of your body. Full extension, fight for it. Whew. Good. And rotations. Thoracic spine is, is so important and often neglected for mobility. And when I was dealing with my injury earlier, I am certain that this was a contributor to my pain makes me highly motivated to take care of it now and you should be motivated as well full rotation don't let anything else move just trying to pull that elbow up to the ceiling So reaching sides at 10. Awesome, let's stretch you out. Release some of those muscles that have been worked or may have been limiting you today. So we're gonna start with hamstrings. 
what you need to do is bring your torso right against your thighs. So that might mean that you bring your legs right in here, or maybe you can have your legs a bit straighter. Torso glued to thighs, grab onto your feet, maintain that torso thigh connection, and try to straighten those legs out a bit as much as you can. You should feel a really good stretch through your hamstrings and just hold that there. All right, moving into your glutes. Just cross one foot over the other, grab onto your ankles. Relax. If you're flexible, you can maybe pull your ankles towards you. For me, this is enough of a stretch. And we'll switch it up so the other leg crosses over, grabbing onto those ankles. You might notice one side's tighter than the other. All right, bring it up. We're going to go into a pancake stretch. So bring your feet in nice and wide. Toes are active, so they're up to the ceiling. Push from behind or walk your hands forward. Get a good stretch through your inner thigh. You can also try it grabbing onto your feet. Really just going for whatever feels most effective. And you're just pulling your chest down towards the floor. Alright, stand it up, do a couple more stretches here using the wall. So on the wall I want you to bring your hands wide, so wider than shoulder width on the wall. Relax your head down in between, let gravity take over, try to get some good stretch here through your upper back and shoulders. And getting into your chest, I know normally I do 90 degrees, today we'll mix it up a bit, so go above 90 and then just rotate. You should feel the stretch almost into your armpit here. This is your pec minor muscle. If you have issues with your hands falling asleep, especially when you're going to bed at night, then this is usually the muscle that is causing that impingement. All right, switching sides, so up above 90 degrees, and just rotate till you feel that stretch in that upper chest area. Awesome job. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope your body feels nice and limber and like it's functioning really well. Have a great day and I will see you for the next class tomorrow.